So it's been a really long time since we've done this, huh? Let's get started with a new series. Experimental settings. Yep, we know what we're doing. This is Modded Minecraft, which is a new series for us here on the channel. And this is going to be Winecraft. Basically, and this is awesome. This is potentially the best biome ever. I love purple. For those of you who have been in the series for a while, you are aware of my deep love for the color purple and how many things I make out of it. So the fact that we spawned in like a purple wonderland going on here is ridiculously awesome. And I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it a lot. Oh my gosh, just look at that. So yeah, uh, welcome to Winecraft, our new series here on the channel where we are going to be using mods in order to remove all the things that just plain suck about the game itself. So that's what we're doing and I'll introduce the mods as we move along. Punch some trees, punch some trees. Actually technically using lavender to beat trees. The first thing that you may notice is up at the top of the screen, we have what am I looking at? which is a mod that lets you know what you're looking at, I guess. And you can see evidence of the second mod we're using right now, which is Fast Leaf Decay. I'm gonna put a list of everything that we're using down in the description of the video, so that if you want to come and play along, you can. Maybe, if this even gets enough popularity, I will release it as a mod pack. First crafting table of the series. Bam. We really need to find some sheep before it gets dark. And I think with all this purple, we're gonna kinda have to have a purple bed. I'm pretty sure it's a rule. One sheep. Two sheep. Big sheep. You you are not helpful. I can't use that wool. You are not a sheep. It's getting kinda dark. And I don't like it. You're still not helpful. There's a shooting at me, sheep. Up, oh, explodey sheep. All is not well in Hugstown, for the third sheep cannot be found. Ah, finally, sheep. 100% needs to be a purple bed. And a friendly reminder that at this point in the game, it's usually much easier to make yourself some charcoal than to try and find coal. So, torches? We got torches. And now we're going hunting for ore. This is not 117, this is running on 116, but because we have create mod and biomes aplenty, we have copper, which is going to be important pretty soon. Along with, surprisingly enough in this series, andesite, which generally doesn't have much of a use in regular vanilla Minecraft other than a decorative block, but in this one it's really important. But more on that later. And first iron of the series. Why can't I find my way out? Mm. It's dolomite, baby! All right, now that we've gathered some more materials, let's go into a bit about why this mod is different from other ones. One of the main mods that we're gonna be playing in this series is called Create. And Create is an automation mod really unlike anything else I've ever seen in Minecraft. And it's kind of amazing. And to get started here, there's something completely new we have to do, and in order to do that, I want to introduce another mod called Just Enough Items, or JEI. And what Just Enough Items does is it allows you to see every single item that exists within Minecraft, regardless of whether you can craft it or not. So the good thing is, is it allows us to search for the first thing that we're going to craft today as part of Create, which is the Water Wheel. And what the water wheel does is it allows us to generate what's called stress. Stress! Stress in this is actually good, unlike in life, because what it allows you to do is stress is basically equivalent to power. And we can go through and just hold W and it will show us how the water wheel works, which is that you run water over it and it turns and in turn that generates power. The more water that goes over it, the faster it will go up to a specific point and we will basically need this stress or this power in order to power all of our creations within create mod. So let's build what we need in order to do that. And first, what we're going to do here is we're going to create andesite alloy. And andesite alloy is very important in create mod because it is the cornerstone of quite a few items. So let's just make as much as we can right now, which is 18 different pieces. 
Once we have that, we want to look and see what we need for our water wheel. And what we need is a large cog wheel and a number of slabs. And they can be any type, as you can see by their circling here. So we can click on the cog wheel and see that we need planks and buttons. So let's get some of those. All right, and now we're ready to make our cog wheel. And we don't need a ton of those, so two will be sufficient. Looking back at the remainder, we need slabs. Now that we've made our water wheel, let's get to the thing we really want to make. And that is a mill. So looking at a millstone, a millstone will let us go through and take any number of items that we put into them, and it will grind them and then output the result. Now you would think, eh, what could I use this for? And that would be an interesting question, like it's showing that you can use wheat. However, there's many things that we can grind in here, and here's where we're going to get into one of the tricks of what we can do with Create that makes it so much more productive than regular mining. And now let's go over here to our water. Now I want this to look nice, basically like a waterfall coming down, and let's remember that water behaves rather interestingly in Minecraft. So let's create ourselves a path where the water has no choice but to go into a specific direction. And now we have our water wheel going down here, so it looks like it's flowing down this lovely waterfall with the water coming out of the little cave. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put down our mixer right here. And the mixer has to be turned by another wheel. You can see by this little gearing here that it needs to do that. So let's take a cog wheel and put it down. And then here we want to transfer the stress units from here to here. And what we could do if this was directly lined up is we could just put on a shaft. But unfortunately, you see it doesn't quite work. So in order to care of this, we need a gearbox. And in this case, since it's going vertically, we need a vertical gearbox. And so once we put this in and connect all these up, you see that it starts to turn. And it's turning rather slowly. This is something we can fix later on in the series, but we don't quite have the equipment for it now. But the interesting thing about this is when you put things into it, it will mill them. And then they can come out. And this can be any number of things. But here's where it gets really cool. Let's go ahead and throw ourselves a hopper and a chest under here so that we give the uh, millstone here a place to put items. So doing that, great, all set. So now that we've got power and we have a place for items to go, let's show what it actually does. Let's take some of our iron ore here and throw a couple of pieces in to it itself. You throw them and it's, you see it vanishes, just like if you were throwing something over a hopper, and it's grinding and grinding and grinding. What this is going to do is this is going to produce what is called crushed iron. And you see this with a lot of the different ores. We'll see this with copper and zinc and a variety of the other ones. It can go through and it can crush a variety of things. Now, you might be asking yourself, okay, so what? Now you have crushed iron ore. Yes, I do. But let's show you the next step. Our next item that we have to make is a mechanical press. And what a mechanical press will do is when you have items that are below it and it detects them, it will come down and it will stamp them. And it can do a variety of things, like it can produce flat sheets, like for example, this right here is a copper sheet. Is it copper or brass? I don't know, I can't tell. Or what it can do is that it can put things in a basin and it can compress them, for example, iron to an iron block. Now, what we want to do right now is we want to produce some iron sheets. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a mechanical press. So like everything else, this needs power, AKA stress. So let's go ahead and put it right here. And what we can do is we can connect it with two shafts to this section. And now you see this too is spinning. And what we want is we want to get some iron sheets. So let's go ahead and toss a block underneath that. And you see now that it has detected it, it will slowly come down and it will stamp it, leaving and you see press goes bonk, so we've made ourselves an advancement. Now what that is, is that's an iron sheet, and we need two more of those, so let's go ahead and throw them in there. And it will go through and it will press them one at a time. But you can see here that our crushed iron has completed. So now we had three iron ore that we threw in, and we ended up with three crushed iron ore. Great. Now what do we do? So next what we want to do is we want to create an encased fan. So now what we want to do is we want to make a propeller. And so let's go ahead and do that. And now that we have a propeller, we have all the items that we need in order to make an encased fan. Okay, and now we finally have our fan running and we are airbenders. 
what we want to do is we want to create an area where we can put down some water. And we can just do this with fence gates. This is not the cleanest thing right now, but we can always make this look better later. So once we put some water in front of this, you'll see the particles change to blue. What this is now doing is this is what is called washing. It is going to be applying that to anything that is in front of it as far as the blue particles go. And this is lovely and refreshing, but also it has a purpose where if we go and we take our three crushed iron that we had before and put it in front of the fan here to be washed, after a period of time, you see something is happening. These are going through and you're getting particle effects and something is going on. There's a mystical transformation. And now if you look, they have turned into iron nuggets. But not only that, they've turned into a lot of iron nuggets. You notice that we started out with three pieces of iron. And now that we go and we craft, we have four with some left over. So we ended up with a heck of a lot more than we would have had just normally doing it. And this is the strength of going through and doing it this way. Let's do the remainder of our ore. Crushed, washed, and we started off with 12 iron ore, and now we have 19 iron ingots. So that's pretty good. It's about one and a half times whatever it is going through here. And eventually we'll do better. But that's a pretty good start. And now we've got to make a trip over here to get some kelp. Because that's something we're going to need a lot of going forward. And eventually we're going to make a total farm for it. But while we're wandering over here, I wanted to stop for a minute and first off, thank folks for watching this with the new series. And I appreciate your patience. For people who didn't know, I have been quite sick to the point of where I lost my voice, where it was becoming extremely painful in order to talk for any length of time. So this is why I've taken the break that I did. But now I'm back and I am more than ready to get going. But also for those of you who may be new to this channel, I am a 100% charity content creator. So I do all of this merely to try and make the world a better place. And every dollar that I get, it's donated to local food banks, whether that be anything that you do through donations of Patreon or on Twitch when I stream, usually Tuesdays at 8 p.m. or any other method, 100% of it goes to local food banks to help feed the hungry. So please, if you've enjoyed what you've been seeing so far, please take a moment to like or subscribe and join our Discord at discord.overhugs.com. Okay, so we've gotten our kelp and we've dried it and we've cleared out some area. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create some belts. And the mechanical belts themselves will help us organize and do more automation here in Create. So why don't we clear all this stuff out and set it up with some more automation in mind? All right, let's see how this works. You'll see we've got quite a few water wheels here because we had to generate quite a bit of stress in order to power this contraption. And we've reorganized it a little bit so that it's wholly automated. And the way that it works is we just start off by opening this chest and putting whatever we want in here. It will go through and using this andesite funnel, it will pull contents of this chest one at a time out and feed them into the millstone. You see that these gears are moving quite fast because we're using a trick of going from a big gear to a small gear, and that changes the ratio, which basically doubles it in speed. Once it comes out here, it will go along this conveyor belt and it will be washed. You see now the fan is pushing all the way up against this andesite funnel, so it's giving it just enough where it will wash perfectly as it comes down to the chest down here. And as you see, we have quite a few iron nuggets in here. This is way more than we would have had from just the five iron, but I took about half a stack. So that gives us all of this. Once again, showing that we're getting about 50% more than whatever we put in. And with that, we're going to call it an episode today. Once again, I wanted to thank you for choosing to spend your time on the adventure with me. I am Overhugs, and this has been Winecraft. As a reminder, I donate the profits I make off of this to local food banks. So if you've enjoyed or otherwise gotten something valuable out of today, I would really appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, or tell a friend. Together, we can help people that are in need. I hope you have the most wonderful of days, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>